In this video, we're going to discuss using a froth pack, an insulating froth pack, and applicable use applications. So if you only have a small area to insulate, like a small addition, maybe a bathroom or a basement remodel, hiring a spray foam contractor, it can be expensive and it's not always a viable option, especially with scheduling and all those things. In these situations, I purchase a, fro a foam spray foam pack, a froth pack, like DAP's Touch and Foam Pro System 600. So on small remodels like a bathroom, I might only have one exterior wall to deal with or a wall and a ceiling. Hiring that spray foam contractor doesn't always work in the schedule. It's not cost effective. So using that System 600 froth pack and doing the insulating myself, it saves me time, money, and allows me to still offer the client a better insulated and sealed wall assembly. The DAP System 600 is a two component polyurethane closed cell foam kit. It covers approximately 600 board feet, 50 cubic feet. It can be effective or it effectively seals air leaks and insulates things like repairs, renovations, and new installs. The System 600 is completely self-contained. It's a two-component foam system, portable and disposable. If properly maintained, the, the foam and the, and the containers can last up to 30 days once you use it. The kit itself, it comes with everything that you need, complete, and the spray applicators, that, that applicator that comes with, it dispenses quick, consistent, flow of rapidly curing foam capable of insulating stud wall cavities, gaps, cracks, expansion joints, and other sources of air leakage. When insulating, we feel that it's best practice to use closed cell spray foam to achieve the desired R value you're looking for. There's other methods, I get it. Fiberglass insulation, while still popular with guys and gals, it's not considered the best practice as an insulator. That's because it's not a good air barrier or vapor barrier, and it performs poorly in cold climates. In colder climates, a poly layer of plastic is added over fiberglass insulation. But look, experience and research has shown that installers are not able to seal this plastic well enough to create a 100% vapor barrier. So depending on where you live, your climate zone, you may be able to get away with less than two inches of foam. We use two, you might be able to get away with one inch if you're in a, a, a easier climate. But we do recommend two inches as colder climates need more of that for, look, the goal here is to seal air leaks and to prevent warm, moist interior air from entering and meeting cooler exterior framing surfaces, which are gonna produce condensation. By keeping things like floor joists, rafter bays, wall studs above that dew point, condensation cannot form, which will prevent mold growth and rot. Closed cell spray foam insulation is the only product that acts as an insulator and an air seal. So to achieve, to achieve that or to ensure that you achieve both of these goals, you need to completely follow the directions on the DAP System 600. But here are some main points that we've learned along the way from using the kits. So probably the most important thing to start off with is to make sure you have the right operating temperatures. Three different temperatures you gotta think about. The chemical has to be warm. 70 to 90 degrees. The spray surface should be somewhere between 60 and 90. You gotta warm it if it's not. And the air temperature should be within 60 to 90. 70 degrees is that sweet spot, right? So if, if you stop, also when you stop applying the spray for any time more than 30 seconds, you need to replace the, the nozzle. So to avoid this, because it's a pain in the neck, exercise the nozzle every once in a while to prevent that from curing. There are two nozzles, uh, different types of nozzles that come with the kit. There's a yellow nozzle for wide spray patterns, and that's best for walls, wall cavities, and rim joists. Then there's a clear nozzle for much narrower spray patterns. When spraying the foam, also, the foam itself should be an off-white color, and it should cure to the touch in 60 seconds. If it's not, you need to read the manual and troubleshoot that, because you might have, might have done something wrong, or it might be mixing improperly. You should avoid using closed cell spray foam in kind of enclosed or restricted areas. And depending on the thickness of a cavity, excessive exothermal heat can, can form discoloration, smoldering, or even fire. So you wanna be careful of that. What I always do is I avoid spraying against any material that um, is gonna reach 250 degrees or more, anything like a chimney pipe, steam pipe, vents, heat vents. Um, and also, in order to get that 100% coverage, of that two inch depth that I'm looking for, I always start with an initial layer of one half inch. 
and I do that one half inch of wet layer and this will help warm the substrate as well and then I go back for a subsequent layer I build up my layers I'll do an inch layer after that now remember the foam will produce a two to three times original expansion volume so it's going to expand when applying one inch layers allow 15 minutes between those layers to the next one to avoid overheating I typically to accomplish this, we typically spray all of our bays first and then we go back and respray. By the time we get back to bay one, it's, it's 15 minutes. The DAP System 600 kit can be used to insulate using the flash and bat method as well. Now flash and bat insulation, it refers to a one to two inch layer of closed cell spray foam and that's to ensure all air leaks and vapor paths are sealed. In my climate zone, again, two inches of foam in colder climates. The closed cell spray foam is then followed with fiberglass bats in the remaining space of whatever you're installing to add additional insulation and meet the required R value for code. This method is an option to someone looking to save costs in closed cell spray foam. It's, it's a great way to save costs while still improving the wall's thermal and vapor permeability performance. Now, flash and bat is most often seen in DIY remodeling applications. And, and that's where I see it most. The biggest concern with flash and bat, especially if it's a DIY spray foam used, it's failing to achieve the proper thickness to create that air seal. You need that air seal, air seal created. Either too little, less than two inches of spray foam is applied or some air leaks were left unsealed. So you gotta be good about and knowing what you're doing. If an air leak, air seal isn't created, condensation can form as warm air meets cold surfaces in that wall cavity and oftentimes that area it's between the foam and the fiberglass and that's where you can get some you know can lead to maybe growth of, of mold or, or eventually wood rot who knows now typically a flash and bat approach is really only gonna work in 2 by 6 lumber or greater 2 by 4 you don't really have room for the insulation so when we do deal with 2 by 4 walls we would recommend filling the entire bay with foam and then just shaving it flush in the article on a Concord Carpenter where I wrote the article accompanying this video, we give examples of flash and bat where it works and we break out the R values. Check it out, I'd appreciate it. The DAP 600 system, it's portable, self-contained dispensing system. And when used according to the manufacturer's directions, the system effectively seals air leaks and is a great insulator. In fact, it's a great solution for quick and easy spray foam applications for repairs, small remodels and new installs, small new installs. So guys, we just discussed using a froth pack in applicable applications. Please check out our other videos on insulating rim joists, basement wall insulation, using uh, rigid foam in basement remodels and, and, and things like that. They're all on the YouTube channel. They're also on, on the web page. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing, leave us a comment or give us a thumbs up. I'm Rob Robillard. We'll see you next time here at Concord Carpenter.